Welcome to Eye Contact. I'm uh, Thomas Kuhn from the University of Frankfurt in Germany. Today I'm talking to Professor Dr. Chachia Sala about advanced femtosecond laser technology. Welcome, Dr. Sala. Dr. Sala, what are the most exciting involvement in femtosecond laser technology for ophthalmic surgeons? It's uh, interesting the development since 2002 when uh, femto was introduced to ophthalmic surgery. Now it almost covers all aspects of anterior segment surgery. And uh, uh, the more development happening, like getting smaller machi machines, uh, fluid interface, uh, lower energy, and uh, the versatility of the machines uh, is helping to improve our results in different aspects of anterior segment surgery. Do you expect femtosecond laser surgery to become more common in cataract surgery at this point? Uh, I think it depends uh, on certain development that should happen. First of all, uh, one of the main things is cost effectiveness. As regards that, one a, a already fake homosification have evolved into almost a perfect procedure. And femto with the cost added also has to show it gives more uh, to the patient and to the surgeon. And as regards the three main aspects of the fem to in cataract surgery is the incision, the capsular axis and fragmentation, aiming to decrease the amount of energy used in the cataract surgery as compared to conventional. But uh, up till this moment, for an experienced surgeon, it doesn't add so much in that part, but maybe for Beginners, it can help them in certain steps. And uh, working with premium IELTS, it can give an advantage. But I think the additions for, for an experienced surgeon now is uh, very well seen in, for example, shallow anterior chambers in subluxated cataracts could do this with a well-dilated pupil. And also astigmatic keratotomy. I think it's a great advantage using the femtolis. For, for what parts of your procedure do you use it at the moment? Actually, uh, my indications, I use it more if I have uh, astigmatism to treat up to one and a half diopters, even two diopters. And for shallow and tear chambers, for me, this is a very good uh, use. And uh, for if I'm using multifocal lenses, the centration of the capsule and the perfect uh, cooptation around the lens and the preventing lens tilt and stability of the lens, I think it's an advantage also. So that is all on cataract surgery and most likely on refractive surgery when you do a refractive lens exchange. Um, and you, you, you covered this, you do the capsulotomy. I think that we have to change from capsulorexis to capsulotomy because we don't tear the, yeah. the, 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 the capsule anymore. You do it for fragmentation to reduce energy. You do your incisions with it. You most likely do astigmatic Cut surgery with yeah, it. Yes. So it's four parts. Do you also use it in cornea surgery? Yes. I, I mean, I femtosecond laser technology overall. Yes. Uh, I use it for uh, penetrating keratoplasty, having the versatility to use different shapes with better cooptation and perfect uh, uh, decreasing the uh, astigmatism postoperatively and the risks of leaks and better adhesion. But also one of the great advantages now that we can do in the dark, the deep anterior lamellar cataplasty, the big bubble we can create with a perfectly uh, delineated uh, tunnel, very close, uh, like. 70 microns or 50 microns near to the endothelium using guided by the OCT we can create the tunnel so then this technique which depends a lot of uh, different variable experience from each surgeon to another can be a reproducible technique for more surgeons to be able to do it in a systematic way to get the same result each time. So I agree with you because DALC is really a procedure which was which has the prob problems when you do it by hand. The big bubble technique is not always achievable. You very often see that you run into complications. You have perforations of the cornea, and then you cannot produce it. You have to do a penetrating keratoplasty. So femtosecond laser can be very useful. I have a question for you. So, Dr. Sala, um, 
we talked about lens surgery, we talked about cornea surgery. A at the moment, uh, uh, when we go through the history of the femtosecond laser technology, that required two machines. How do you see the future? How, what are you doing? Um, do we need two machines, one machine? What, what is your view on this? Definitely one machine that can do all is really practical, cost effective, and very useful. And the smaller the machine is, the mobile the machine, then you can get it into the OR. Regarding cornea surgery, it's much safer to dock uh, for the, as if you are using normal uh, uh, terrifines. So uh, you have the patient in the same room, you don't risk uh, the transportation of the patient and the anterior chamber opening or underdoing so as not to perforate the anterior chamber until the patient gets into the operating theater. And for the cataract surgery, cataract surgery in conventional phaco suffocation is very fast surgery. So one of the drawbacks of FEM2 was always it takes time, much more time. For me now, it increases with all the added things with the machine inside the room and the patient is scrubbed. Four minutes, it adds more, four minutes, which is really not that bothersome, especially if I'm using it for uh, extra steps like astigmatic keratotomy or using a multifocal lens. What, what I see at Fernley at the, the femtosecond laser technology is developed either in two directions. Either they combine cataract or let's say lens and cornea surgery, which is a great asset and, and you can do your corneal procedures like penetrating, dark, and you also can do your capsulotomy fragmentation. On the other hand, then you need digital systems for your cataract procedure and then you have more a lens system which is specialized on the lens technology and not every single center does cornea surgery. So yeah. for, let's say for the, for the normal cataract procedure, even for the refractive procedures, do you then think that you still have to have these modules? Different modules? Yeah, no. the, on, on the cornea. No. No, because that's, that's for, so I think it really depends on the environment. Now, I, one last question in this whole femtosecond laser um, discussion. Do you think that new developments help to reduce known complications. There are, with every procedure, also complications. Do you think that new developments can reduce known complications on femtosecond laser surgery? Yes, <coughs> one, one very important thing is using this less energy, uh, because less energy, can, uh, more energy can, and it has been shown, it, it releases more in, uh, inflammatory mediators in the anterior chamber that can cause meiosis and also can, diffuse posteriorly and causes cystodmectal edema. So the lesser energy used, the less complications uh, we will have. Thank you, Dr. Sala. Thank you for joining us. Uh, for more information, please take a look at eurotimes.org.